The House of Representatives expected to vote on a historic $2 trillion coronavirus relief package today before it heads to the president's desk to be signed. The bill includes funding for public health, small business loans, expanding unemployment, and direct payments to Americans. Joining me right now over the phone is U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin. Mr. Secretary, thanks very much for joining us once again. Great to have you this morning. Good morning, Maria. It's always great to be with you. And as you said, this is really historic bipartisan legislation to kill this coronavirus and save U.S. jobs and U.S. You. business. Yep. Yeah, I, I, and it's obviously relief that is very sorely needed. I'd love you to talk a little about the mechanics of the Federal Reserve leverage here as part of this. This, you know, one analyst writes $454 billion can turn into $4.5 trillion uh, because of the, the passage of this act, including uh, for the ESF, the, the important fund which en enables the Treasury to backstop what the Fed is doing. Can you walk us through that, how uh, the, the uh, money from the Treasury can be levered up by the Fed, ultimately giving them some $4.5 trillion to purchase assets, Secretary? Well, Maria, let, let me explain this to you. And uh, as, as I've said before, Chairman Powell and I are speaking multiple times a day, every day. And even before this legislation was passed, uh, the Fed uh, requested use of, of 13.3. Those are their emergency powers. The way this works is the Fed makes a request to me as Treasury Secretary. Uh, I have to approve it. Uh, I've approved all the requests so far. We've announced five of these transactions using existing money that we had before the legislation was passed. And the, the mechanism works in, in some of these uh, where the Fed is doing certain transactions, they get credit support from the Treasury and money that we put up with the Exchange Stabilization Fund. So the Fed and Treasury didn't wait for Congress to act. We've already started using this. We didn't have enough money. Congress allocated to us more money, and I can tell you uh, we are moving at lightning speed. Lightning speed and enormous numbers. You have to believe this is going to move the needle. Do you think we could avoid a recession with all of this stimulus? You know, Marie, I, I made this comment yesterday, and I, I just want to clarify it, because, you know, the number one issue is, is not what the economic numbers are right now. The, the number one issue is the hardship to the American people who are losing their jobs. And we have multiple approaches to this to help the American workers, because this is not their fault. We have a small business lending program for retention loans that should help 50 percent of the U.S. payroll, and that it provides eight weeks for people to work with forgivable loans. Uh, I'm on record as saying we're going to have a new program up by next Friday where banks can lend. Uh, I mean, that, that would be a, a, a historic achievement that is just incredibly aggressive. This is a brand new program, the Treasury working with the SBA. Uh, we're doing everything we can because Americans need that money now. They can't wait for government to take three or four or six months like we normally do. We also have the economic income payments. Uh, again, during the Obama years, this took months and months for the Treasury and IRS to get out. Uh, I've committed that the IRS will get these direct deposit in three weeks. Again, American workers can't wait. And, and the last part is the unemployment insurance, and that will go through the states. Um, I know the states are a bit overwhelmed in their unemployment insurance, but they're going to work as hard as they have. And I know Lindsay and others have commented on this. The reason why we sent one number is we had to create a simple system, and we didn't think it would be fair to send certain states $400 and other states $800. So on a bipartisan basis at the, the banking committee, they picked $600 across the board. So, so when you said yesterday, you know, these numbers don't matter in, in response to the numbers on jobless claims up to 3.3 million, what you were saying was that you think that this is just a spike, it's temporary, and things will normalize by year end. Is that what you yeah, what meant it, when you said what, these numbers? I, what, yeah. What, what I should have said is these, these numbers matter because it indicates people are losing their jobs. And, you know, now we have government programs. We'll either get those people back to work or we'll get those people money. But whether, whether the number is higher or lower in the short term, economic statistics at the moment are not relevant. We're in an unprecedented situation 
where the government shut down major parts of the economy. So whether it's unemployment claims or other numbers, this doesn't reflect the normal economy. This reflects government action. And that's why, you know, mm-hmm. this historic $2 trillion package, plus, as you said, another $4 trillion we can use with the Fed, that's $6 trillion to help save American workers and American business. And, and the president is fully committed that we're going to do everything in our power to protect workers and business. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary, the numbers. And I want to thank you so much for the hard work that you've been putting into the secretary. I know this is a really in, in incredibly critical moment in time. So thank you to you and your leadership team. But I got to ask you about some of the other things in the bill. You just heard from Karl Rove and how Joe Biden should have stopped Nancy Pelosi. And of course, you saw the op-ed in the journal this morning talking about money going uh, to, to tighten every fiber of the, so, the social safety net and, and funding lots of agencies agencies in the government. What about that? What about all of the other things that are in this bill that you had to agree to to placate colleagues on, on the left? I mean, look, there's the Forest Service getting $3 million for forest and rangeland research, $27 million for capital improvement and maintenance, and another $7 million for wildfire management, Secretary. Maria, I think 90 percent of the things in this bill reflect what the president wanted and the president's priority to get the economy back to work, and also the president's priority to send money to hospitals and states to fight the coronavirus. You know, in any bipartisan deal, you know, it's not 100 percent. It's bipartisan. So the only thing I would say is this is a time where we need everybody to come together. And it's not a time to criticize parts of the deal that we may not have liked. Understood. It's the time that everybody should say, this is the time that we want to see the government and the states all come together and execute on the largest financial package in the history of time that the president now has uh, the support of Congress and hopefully will sign today to fight this war. And this is a war and we will win this war and we will protect American economy. Tell me about the stakes in the airlines. The president talked a little about this last night with Sean Hannity. But what do you want to see in terms of the government taking stakes in the airlines here? Do you want to get equity, warrants? How will that work in terms of billions of dollars in direct grants allocated to the airline industry in this package? Maria, I've been very clear this is not an airline bailout, okay, and that the the taxpayers need to be compensated for relief they're giving to airlines. But let me just also say the airlines, in our view, have national security interests. Uh, We need to make sure that when we reopen this economy that we have domestic and international air travel. And I think we have the right balance of being able to provide relief. By the way, all the relief goes to pay workers so that the airlines can operate and are ready to reopen this, but taxpayers get compensated. So uh, it's probably one of the more complicated parts of this, but I think we struck the right balance. And again, let me be clear, this is not an airline bailout. It is support to the airlines for national security reasons that the taxpayers are going to be compensated for. Understood. But you also have to believe that Boeing is national security. They've got a very important military part of the business. Putting the, the commercial jet business aside, will there be an equity stake taken in Boeing? Uh, Maria, I can, I can only comment on what Boeing has said publicly, which is Boeing has said that uh, they have no intention of, of using the programs. That may change in the future. So, again, you know, these, let me be clear. These are, these are things that yeah. the companies need to come and ask us for. So, uh, again, you know, right now Boeing's saying they don't need it. And, and, again, let me also be clear, you know, this is not about the 737 MAX. If we do something with Boeing, yes, of course. Uh, again, the, the taxpayers will be fully compensated. But uh, look, I, I appreciate the fact that Boeing thinks they can operate on their own. That's what we want them to do. The, the, the government is mm-hmm. only there in, in case they can't do that. And again, no bailout for Boeing or anyone else. Understood. But you're right. I mean, it has nothing to do with the max and it has nothing to do with the commercial side of the business. It's national security when you look at the military business at Boeing. But we'll wait to see what happens there because it could change, right? Uh, It could. And, And again, what I would say is our number one focus is we are working at lightning speed 
to execute programs that normally take two or three years. So, you know, I can assure you Unbelievable. Uh, we, have, we have people coming from other agencies in the government to come and help us out. We've got a lot of people who are moving over. We have the full support of the president and the cabinet. And uh, I can assure you we're going to execute on this. Tell me about the small business part of this, Secretary, because this is really the area that our viewers have been asking a lot about when they're actually going to get help here. Small businesses, even as small as I'm talking about restaurants that feel like they may not make it out of this because they had to close and they remain closed with, with, with people on lockdown. Uh, it's a great program. And, you know, I especially want to thank Marco Rubio, Susan Collins, uh, Mark Warner, and, and other people that really helped us on a bipartisan basis. Uh, every small business, if you have 500 or less employees, and certain industries can actually go higher than that, you can get a loan yeah. that will cover eight weeks of your payroll plus overhead. And as long as you hire those people, your loan will be forgiven. So, you know, this, this keeps 50 percent of American workers at work. Um, and we understand these are restaurants that are closed. These are retail shops that are closed in malls. This is not mm -hmm. the fault of the American public. And we want to get all those people paid. And, and as I said, you know, th this is a Herculean effort that people will go into banks next Friday and be able to, to get loans. And it's going to be a very simple process yeah. where any FDIC-insured institution – can underwrite the loan, approve it immediately as a government-guaranteed loan, and get money to that small business. So I, I want to encourage all the small businesses out there, um, within the next few mm. days, we'll be putting out guidance, we'll be putting out certain information. You don't have to call us or the SBA yet because we're putting this information out, but we're going to get money to you. The president's number one objective is the medical process. And his number two objective is, from an economic standpoint, to protect American workers. Uh, Ms. Ms. Secretary, I recognize right now is not the time to uh, think about debt and uh, what this is going to do to the balance sheet of America. But when does that become a priority, given all of the spending, sir? Maria, this is a war, okay? And when you win a war, you say, we're going to spend what it takes to protect the American people. And the good news is, at interest rates that are close to zero, we can borrow a lot of money, and it's inexpensive. But uh, I appreciate okay. Congress came together and said, we're going to make sure that we have the resources to support the American public and American business. And like any other war, mm -hmm. the entire resources of the U.S. government, this is when you use them. Let me ask you a final question here, Secretary. The last time we spoke a couple times ago, actually, you said we are expecting a gigantic fourth quarter. That was your word, not mine. Talk a little about the pent-up demand that you're expecting once we do come out of this. With this kind of stimulus coming out to the, to the economy, you have to believe things are going to come back in a big way if we actually do get the, the, the vaccines and the treatments and, and the health part of this is okay. So what are you expecting, say, in the fourth quarter and first quarter of 2021? Marie, as I've said, this, this is not a normal financial situation. You know, this is an extraordinary situation. If we are successful in combating this medical issue quickly, and by the way, every day I listen to the medical professionals and here, the possibility of new drugs that are going to have an impact, um, you know, the, the sooner we get this under control and win this war with this financial package and keeping people employed and keeping workers ready, kind of as soon as the president's ready to reopen the economy, American workers and American business will have money. And I would expect that you'll see the economy bounce back. And I, and I like the fact that the White House is focusing on classifying certain counties by risk level, Secretary. How will that work? You know, Maria, I, I'm full-time focused on the economic aspects of this. So although I'm sitting in on the task force and listening to the medical side, uh, I'm leaving that to the president and the vice president and the medical professionals uh, to deal with. I mean, we just had Rick Reeder on, and Rick Reeder from BlackRock said that we could see GDP in the fourth quarter of 5 percent, and we could see 8 percent in the first quarter. He's also talking about all of this pent-up demand and what things might look like when we get out of that. Does that sound realistic to you, a 5 percent GDP number at the end of the year? 
Uh, absolutely. And, and the sooner we can execute on this package and the sooner we can win this war against this virus, the, the economy will bounce back very quickly. So, you know, there will be jobless claims. Uh, again, you know, a lot of these programs weren't up and running. You know, I want to be very clear. You know, we are trying to protect the, protect the American workers. Again, whether it's the SBA loans, whether it's tax credits, whether it's checks in the mail, whether it's enhanced unemployment insurance, the president's objective is to protect American workers and make sure that they have the resources to get through this as we've shut down the economy. And when we reopen it, we want the U.S. economy to reopen quickly, and that's why we're paying people to keep workers on board. Secretary, extraordinary work. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Maria.